Okay, hi everyone. So we are here with a question where a plane lands on the run runway with initial horizontal velocity of 25 meters per second and it experiences um, a few forces, right? Notably drag force and lift force. So drag is you know purely horizontal and lift force is purely vertical. And um yeah, and we're given that the co we're given the ratio of the coefficients of the drag force and lift force, like both of them are quadratic with respect to velocity. And we're going also given the coefficient of friction between the tires and the runway. So the way to think of these tires thing, so of course the first thing you might be wondering is um wait if the if the plane is landing and the tires are gonna rotate and whatnot, then is it do we need to consider the um do, do we need to consider things like rolling without slipping and things like that? And my answer to you is um th this question it doesn't target that. So, so when you talk about coefficient of friction between tires and runway, just think of the tires as fixed, right? So think of them as think of them as um the, the tires are fixed, they're not rotating. So that means that when when the tires are dragging against the runway, then it's always slipping. Okay, so that, that allows us to um not worry about the the things about like the tire rolling because then if you want to consider about tire rolling then you think about like mono of inertia and things like that. But that's not the that's not the scope of this question. The scope of this question is just telling us to solve this differential equation involving drag and lift. Okay, so how do we first uh, go about doing it? So first of all, we gonna, let's draw a force body diagram, right? So what are the um what are the forces acting on the plane? There's gonna be lift force, right? So the lift force is gonna be C Y V squared. There's also gonna be a normal contact force, right? Normal contact force is N, um, gravitational force, right? M G. Um, there's gonna be drag, which is uh, C X V squared, right? And it's going to be um there's going to be friction also, right? Which is uh f friction right but we know that friction is always in this case i'm gonna I, I say that tires are fixed right so as long as it's moving it's always slipping right and we're interested in when it comes to a stop right so when it comes to a stop then there's no that, that's the, when, when it's when it, as long as it's not stopping yet right there's always going to be slipping so in this case um friction i can replace with mu n because it's always slipping um and and yeah and so those are the forces acting on it and so Let's say I let rightward to be positive for acceleration, right? So AX and vertical acceleration, let it be AY, right? There's a few things we can observe, first of all, and that is that AY acceleration vertically is always zero. So why is that so, right? Because um, let's argue that acceleration vertically is zero. I think it's fairly obvious because the plane doesn't accelerate vertically, but just just for the sake of rigorous, for, for the sake of being rigorous, um, let me talk about it. So the plane doesn't sink into the ground because normal contact force will always increase to prevent that from happening, right? The rule of normal contact force is always to prevent things from sinking into the normal, the, the, the ground, right? Um, and, and, okay, so, and, and what about this and this, right? We realize that, um, would, is there ever a case where CYV squared, right, the lift is greater than MG and then normal contact force, because it cannot be negative, right? We can remember the normal contact force is always pushing, it's never pulling. Right, is there so our question is is it a, is there ever a case where C, the lift force is greater than mg and the answer is that in this case no because in this case the when it lands on the runway with this horizontal velocity right um the after it lands right the velocity is always going to decrease right because it's, it's it experiences all these kind of drag forces so it, the velocity is always going to drop so the, this quantity over here is always going to decrease right and mg is constant right over time so um there's no way that the lift will ever increase to a point that is bigger than mg. So we know for certainty that the vertical acceleration ay is equal to zero for all times. Okay, so now we can write down the, the equations um, to balance our, our, our forces. Um, so vertic uh, vertically, we have that cy v squared uh, plus n is equal to mg. Okay, and and horizontally, we have that um, Cx, okay, we have that uh, minus Cx, right, because it's in the left direction, and then minus mu n, right, is equals to um, m ax, all right, and also, also one thing to note is that the v in this case, the ve velocity of the plane, right, in the question, right, which, 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 which is what our drag force and lift force depends on, right, 
the V in this case is actually referring to purely the horizontal V, right? Because there's no vertical velocity, right? So for all purposes, we can say that AX is equals to dV dt, okay? Usually we need to put VX over here, but in this case, there's no vertical component of velocity. So this is V is equal to VX. Okay, so from here, we have these two equations and um, yeah, and actually we are ready to start solving. Okay, so, so these, these are the two equations we have. Right, and how do we solve them? Right, the first equation, the first equation is basically purely an equation for n, right? Because we realize that this is known, this is or rather this is this is so called like well defined, and this is so called well defined. But n in this case, n would always adjust itself to make this equation hold true, right? N is always a n is always a self adjusting. The normal contact force is always self adjusting to balance out forces. So the only role that the first equation has is to determine n. Right. So basically, that tells us that the first equation, the only use for it is to write n in terms of something, because otherwise, we don't know what n is. So n is equals to mg minus cy v squared. Okay, so yeah, so okay, so then we substitute that into the second equation. So the differential equation we're going to get is this. So mg minus cy v squared equals to m and a a in this case ax is actually dv dt okay so this is the differential equation we need to solve right specifically we need to solve this differential equation we need to um, get v as a function of time right so if this is a differential equation where v is a function of time after we find v of t right we can find when v of t is equals to zero right and this v of t, right? This when we're gonna find when v of t stop equals to zero, and using this t stop, we substitute it. We 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 integrate v of t with respect to dt, and from zero to t stop, uh, and then ideally that will give us the x stop, right? X the distance that we travel before the plane comes to a stop, which is the goal of the question, right? So this is a this this is mathematically this is our goal, right? But that isn't the um this is our goal, but that that shouldn't be the approach we're gonna take, right? Because if you were to actually solve for v of t, right, then it's possible, right? Theoretically, it's possible because this is a separable differential equation, right? So you can bring the v terms to the right hand side and bring the dt to the left and and then integrate with both sides, right? So left hand side will be with respect to time, right hand side with respect to um, v. But there's two things that is difficult, right? One is when you try to bring this to the right hand side, it's quite difficult to integrate something over function of v squared right you need to you need to um yeah it's, it's quite difficult to do that um and number two is that even after you do that you need to do all these steps when you find the stopping time right and you, that's probably not going to be a nice equation right t stop is probably going to be quite nasty and you're going to need to find um x stop also right when you integrate this nasty equation that you get and so that's not the approach we're going to take actually actually the approach we're going to take is we're actually going to we're actually going to not solve the equation differential equation this way, but actually going to solve. We're actually going to write the right hand side over here in terms of d v squared. Okay, and the motivation is that if we do this, right, if the right hand side is in terms of something d v squared, right, then this is our new variable now. And the new with this our new being our new variable, we can bring the left hand side over, so we get something in terms of v squared in the bot on the denominator. And this is just um this is very nice, right? This is just basically a logarithm of v squared. So that's that's our goal. We want to rephrase the right hand side, right, in terms of d v squared. And this actually has a nice parallel with uh what we know, right? When we write something like v squared is equal to u squared plus two a s. Right. What we're actually doing in this case, we're actually taking we're actually taking uh a equals to d v d t and we're actually integrating both sides with respect to position, right? So actually we're integrating both sides with respect to position. And based on that, we're actually gonna we get this. Okay, so so that kind of um motivates us to to write the right hand side right um to, it actually motivates us to write the right hand side in terms of a derivative of v squared over position right and how how do we do that right uh we can do that by considering this considering this derivative right so if you consider this derivative um you can do it using you can you can write the denominator as we can write the denominator as uh, d as as v as v dt 
right? So we get 1 over v, and then this one is dv squared over dt, right? And then this, subsequently, is equals to chain rule, 1 over v. This is 2v, right? And dv dt, right? And so we see that this is actually equals to 2 dv dt. So the right-hand side, dv dt, is actually equals to, it can be written as half m times d v squared over dx. Okay, so this this trick over here, right? This trick over here where we rewrite dv dt in terms of dv squared dx, right? This is actually akin to doing the work energy theorem, right? So basically, you can kind of think of this as um, this is f equals m a, right? F equals m a. This red equation is effectively f equals m a, right? And and what do we do when we don't want to solve, when we don't know integrate with respect to time, we integrate with respect to displacement. So we get integral of f dx is equals to, um, is it equals to uh, m a d, integral of a dx, and d a, a dx is actually, is actually half m integral of d v squared, right? So, so a dx is actually v dv. Okay, and, and then that's how we get the work energy theorem, in fact, actually. So actually, the, the, I just wanted to mention this. I have a, I'll put a link to a video below where I talk about the connection between the v squared equals v squared plus 2as, right? The kinematics equation, very simple, but that is connection with the work energy theorem. So there's, there's this connection. Basically, you're doing the same kind of math. You're integrating with respect to displacement, right? And I'll put that, the, I'll put the video in the description below, okay? So... Yeah. So so using that um, using that we, we see that now we've written the right hand side in terms of this and left hand side is the same thing right left hand side is literally the same thing, so let me just copy paste it down here. Okay. And and what that allows us to do is um now we can bring the denominator over here over. So now now I'm gonna bring the dx over and I'm gonna bring the denominator here over, and the dx is over here. Okay. And, and so now this denominator is huge, but we see that it's quite simple now because the variable on top is v squared and the denominator variable is also v squared, right? It's, the denominator is basically linear, linear in v squared. And um, that makes us very happy because we know how to integrate 1 over x plus a, right? We know how to integrate linear functions, uh, reciprocal of linear functions. Um, so, yeah, okay, so a, f a small side note over here, which is that you may be a bit worried. What if this v squared, right? Doesn't what if v is negative, right? What if v is negative? Um, and you'll be right to worry about that. In in those cases where v is negative, technically speaking, when you integrate, the integral doesn't make a lot. You, you need to you need to split integral into cases where it's positive and it's negative, right? So, um, because because it'll go to zero and then you you go to some you go to you go to positive to zero to something positive again. So you need to worry about those cases. But um but in this case we're lucky because v squared is always uh, sorry, not, not v squared greater than zero. That's always a true case. But in this case v is always greater than zero. Right? As a function of time, as a function of time, v of t is always positive, right? It's always moving to the right. The only time when it's equals to zero, right? Okay, maybe I put greater than equals to zero, the only time when it's equals to zero is when it comes to a stop. And that's the end of the motion, right? So in this case, we have a nice way. Make sure of this, right? Um, so we can comfortably do the integral, right? Without worrying about cases where, oh, what if you, what if you change direction, right? Uh, but rest assured, even when you change direction, um, most of the cases is still okay, right? You can still do the math. It's just if you want to think a bit more conceptually, then you need to worry about the signs. So anyway. Um, with this, right, where where does it bring us? So we are we're curious in the distance the plane traveled on the runway before coming to a stop, right? So it's very nice, right, that we want to integrate the left hand side from let's say the plane when the plane touched down, right? That when the plane touched down, the moment it touches down is the moment it touches down, right? The moment it touches down, that's where x equals to zero. Let's call that x equals to zero. Then let's say the stopping position is x equals to x stop. Okay? So when we integrate, we want to integrate from x from x equals to zero to x equals to x stop right dx right and that's our left hand side and the right hand side we're going to integrate of uh, we're going to integrate from something v squared equals to something right v squared equals to something to v squared equals to something right of the entire right thing so so what are we going to integrate um we're going to integrate the, the two bounds in this case we're interested in right remember there are different points so when the when 
essentially, okay, so I'm, okay, essentially what I'm trying to say is that the x equals to zero in this case is a is an event in 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 is an event in space and time, right? It's an event in this phase space of sorts. And this v squared equals to something, so it must be the same event, right? Meaning that this v squared is the same v squared as the one that gives us x equals to zero, right? And likewise, this um this x stop, right? When it stops, right, that must correspond to the same event, right? The same event that and, and this velocity squared must be that that one, that, that event that gives us x stop, right? So the answer is that actually at x equals to zero, right, when it just touches down, right, the horizontal velocity is 25 meter per second, right? So I'm gonna call that u, right? So this v squared in this case is actually u squared. And the second one over here is actually going to be zero because when the plane stops, right, then velocity is zero, velocity squared is zero. So the point here is that um, when you see a when you see a differential, when you see a function of when you see an equation of differentials like this, right? Um, that tells us how x changes versus how dv squared changes, right? But when we do the integral, basically we're summing up all these tiny little changes. And the points, the two end points of the integral where we integrate with respect to, right? Those are the two, like two, 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 two hallmarks, right? Two points in space, right? Two, two events from which we want to integrate. We want to sum from to two, right? So we want to sum from this event to this event. So basically, I highlighted both of these in blue because I want to emphasize that whenever you do this kind of integral, they need to be the same kind of event. So you're asking at x equals to zero, what is the velocity squared? At x equals to x stop, what is the velocity squared, right? And they must be the same. If not, you wouldn't get something that makes sense. Okay, so so that's just a small side note on integrals. So, okay, so we're integrating dv squared, right? And we're integrating, uh, what function are we integrating? We're actually we can we can write it in a nice linear way, right? So this will actually be mu c y minus c x, um, v squared minus mu m g. Okay, so we're write, written in a nice way. So now it looks like d x over x plus a, right? Or rather, a x plus b, right? We, now it looks like a nice linear function, right? Which we, when we integrate, we're just gonna get ln of, um, one over a ln of, a x plus b absolute, right? So so you can see that in this case. Okay, I shouldn't use x, but you get an idea, right? So in this case, the integral over here, the integral over here is just is just going to be a logarithm of a linear function of v squared. So right hand side, right, is going to be, uh, it's going to be m over two mu c y minus c x, right, and logarithm of uh logarithm of logarithm of absolute of mu c y minus c x v squared minus mu m g at the two end points right at the two end points of v squared equals to zero and v squared equals to u squared okay so um uh, there's there's of course you see v squared equals to zero as a top one you might be a bit scared because you might be oh wait isn't that doesn't that mean the logarithm is negative or something and um that's okay right in the end it will cancel out so in the end, you'll still get the correct answer. And the left-hand side is very simple, right? Integral of dx is just x. In substitute to the endpoints, you just get x stop. Right? So actually, this is this is what we are looking for. So we just need to evaluate this entire right-hand side for the remaining part of the question. Okay? So I think the if you evaluate the remaining right-hand side, you're going to get the correct answer. Um, so you can go ahead and try that yourself. But I just want to take some time to re-emphasize the key ideas in this question before we do the remaining boring, tedious calculations. Right? The key idea in this question is... Uh, the key idea in this question is um, when you see this differential equation, right, we actually didn't want to solve v as a function of time. We, it was sometimes when you see a differential equation, it's actually better to solve um, v squared as a function of position. Okay, so so we integrate, we reform this differential equation into into uh into into this one, right, where we have is basically d v squared over dx instead. And that is nice because we have we have we have v squared everywhere in the denominator, right? So if we have dv squared as a differential, then this becomes linear, right, in v squared. So yeah, so everything becomes a logarithm. Okay, so so yeah, so so um we also emphasize a bit on the two endpoints of the integral. Uh they need to be the same event. Okay. And so now let's just evaluate this integral. 
Um, so if we evaluate this integral, we can arrive at... Okay, so I'm going to get this. Cy minus Cx, right? So the remaining part will be quite boring. You can go ahead and skip ahead a bit if you want. Logarithm of mu Cy minus Cx. Okay, but that is zero. Right? So minus mu mg over over um, mu cy minus cx u squared minus mu mg okay so that's our thing then now right now now we're actually going to okay my, my m's kind of look like mu so i need to be a bit careful right so now we're actually going to we're actually going to um we're actually going to use the fact that we're actually going to use the fact that uh when it first lands right when it first lands What's the lift force? When it first lands, the lift is cy u squared, right? And when it first lands, we expect the normal contact force is zero. Okay? It's only when um yeah, when it first lands, it, it, it lands it lands assuming that it lands nicely in the sense that it doesn't bang onto the ground, right? If it lands nicely, right, that means that that means that um the, the there's no need for the normal contact force to act, right? So that's assumption, right? That when it lands nicely, there's no need for normal contact force to 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 to, to make sure that there's no vertical acceleration, right? And that lift is purely enough, right, to counteract gravity. Okay, so so this is assumption. Um because without this assumption you don't really know what M is and you don't know how M is related to the rest of the constants so this is assumption uh, basic, i'll call this the assumption right the assumption of gentle uh, landing okay? the assumption of gentle landing and yeah it, it means that the plane when it lands it doesn't land like this right it lands it lands very very smoothly like this okay so yeah so so using that we can sub we can use the fact that m mg is equals to c y u squared right so it's, we rearrange it and we get uh, this so we're gonna get m is c y u squared the remaining is just substitution 2 mu c y minus c x uh, logarithm of absolute of minus mu c y u squared over mu c y minus c x u squared minus mu c y u squared Okay, so simplifying this down, we, we now we're gonna bring this cy right onto the denominator because we are given the ratio cx over cy, right? But we're not given cy and cx specifically. So we need to express all the instances of cy and cx in terms of the ratio of cx over cy. So this is gonna give us u squared over two mu minus cx over cy, right? So we want ratios appear appearing. We do not want the individual constants, right? So they must come together. So this is mu u squared over um, mu minus cx over cy u squared minus um, mu u squared. Okay. So yeah. So now we have we have all the constants we know, right? We have mu which is zero point one. We have cx over cy zero point two, and we have u which is uh, twenty five meters per second. So if you substitute in all these values, what we're gonna get? We're gonna get um, we're gonna get approximately two two one, okay, two three as f. So, uh, yeah. So so so, that's the answer, right? The distance that is gonna take is gonna travel before it comes to the stop is two two one meters. So basically, the key idea in this is to is to recognize that your life could be a lot simpler if you didn't solve v as a function of time right if you solve v as a function of time and you got the correct answer kudos to you right but that is a very very painful process so instead of doing that right you wanted to you want you we can reform the differential equation such that you can almost get the answer immediately with just one integral right because the dx on the left hand side saves us because we are looking for the distance it moves before it stops right? of course if it's a if you're asking for the time it takes right then then there's a bit of a different story then maybe it'd be better to do the v as a function of time instead of v as a function of x. All right. So yeah, I hope that you've learned a thing or two from this question. I will see you in the next question.